Hello everyone, I am Karl Zielinski and today I would like to answer two common questions about constants in Odin. The first one is, why can you assign 7.42 to both f32 and f64 variables? What this means is that if we for example have this variable here, decimal number that is of type f32, then we can assign 7.42 to it. If we have a variable like uh, this one, decimal number f64, that is of type f64, then we can also assign the value 7.42 to it. If you come from a language such as C, C++ or C sharp, then you might be used to having to put an f at this point here in order to make this work properly. Because in those languages, the decimal number literal, the sort of just number like this has a strong type associated with it. So if you put an F at the end, then you get a 32 bit decimal number literal. And if you don't put an F at the end, you get a 64 bit. But in Odin, you don't need to do any of that. And that's related to the constant system because both these things are constant. So we will look at a bit that how that works. The second question is, what are the defaults for type inference? So type inference is when you, for example, have something like this, where you say number colon equals. This creates a new variable and immediately gives it the value seven, but we don't say which type number has. It is inferred from the stuff on the right-hand side. So it looks at the right-hand side and sees a seven and decides that number is of type int. And for a decimal number, you see that the type is inferred to be F64 if there is sort of a decimal point in it instead. So the question is like, what are the defaults for the different types of type inference? And why does it work like this? What, what, what sort of decides that it works like this? And this is again related to the constant system, this default, so we'll see that as well. So let's first look at integer constants. So you can declare a new constant like this, constant number colon colon 12. And when you have that, then you can assign that to a variable like this, number colon equals constant number. Doing this is identical to doing this. You can see this constant, this named constant numbers as just being sort of pasted in wherever you use them. But both these are constants. You can see this 12 as sort of a nameless constant and this one as a named constant, but you can also just see the name constant as being pasted in like that. So what is then the type of constant number and or the type of just a 12? Because if we look at this line here, this one uses type inference, right? To, to figure out the type of number. The type of number will be int. Since it looks at the right hand side to figure this type out, then we could be like, okay, but I guess then that 12 has the type int, but that's not correct. What 12, because 12 is a constant and constants have their own little type system and the type of 12 is untyped integer. Now untyped integer is one of the four so-called untyped types that exist within Odin and we will look at the other three a bit later. But what you should remember here is that this is just a tiny extra type system that's just for constants. Odin in general has a strong type system for variables, like you cannot put an integer into an f32 without a cast and all that. But if you try to assign something, a constant of some untyped type, for example, like untyped integer, if you try to assign that into something else, then there are certain implicit conversions that may happen in that direction, sort of from a constant into a variable. So the implicit conversions for an untyped integer say that you are allowed to implicitly convert this constant to any integer or any float. So you can make an int and assign this constant number to it. You can make a smaller int like this 8-bit integer and assign constant number to it. And also just remember that 7 here is also a untyped integer. So you can make a f32 and assign 7 to it because it allows the implicit conversion and you can do the same with f64. And the type inference default for untyped integer is int. So let's then look at floating point constants. So these are constants with decimals in them. These constants have the type untyped float. So if you type something like this, decimal constant colon colon 27.12, then this thing has untyped float as type. And you can assign this one to 
any 32-bit floating point number or you can assign it to any 64-bit floating point number or a 16-bit floating point number. So the rule for implicit conversion with uh, untyped floats is that you can assign an untyped float to any floating point variable, but you cannot assign it to something of type int, for example. So here we make a variable a number of type int and we try to assign our decimal constant to it, but this would not compile. And the type inference default for an untyped float if is f64. So it's the untyped float type that just has a default. So whenever it sees something like this, 612.51 on the right hand side and the compiler is like, okay, this is an untyped float, but now we want to know what type to have for this one. Okay, we will use uh, F64. However, since you you can type something like this as well, uh, since it also allows the implicit conversion into an F32. So this will make an F32 variable that contains this. But if you don't specify anything, then the type inference default is used. So then we can answer our first question. Why can you assign 7.42 to both F32 and F64 variables? That is because 7.42 is a constant and constants have their own little type system and the type for a constant with a, a decimal in it is untyped float and untyped floats allow implicit conversions to F16, F32 and F64 so both these work out fine without having to put in any F or anything anywhere. The second question was what are the defaults for type inference and to answer this I made this little summary of all the four untyped types. We've seen two of them and I'll explain what the other two are right here. So the first one we've seen already, untyped integer. This is any numeric constant without a period and it can be implicitly cast to any integer or floating point type and the inference default for it is int. So if you write something like this then this variable will have type int. That's decided by untyped integer. The second type of constant is untyped float. This is any numeric constant that has a period, such as this one down here. And these can be implicitly cast to any floating point type, such as F16, F32, and F64. And the type inference default is F64. So if you type something like this, then some variable will always be of type F64. And this happens, this F64 thing happens on all systems, even on 32-bit CPUs. With the untyped integer, you get the type int, but the type int depends on the, the, the CPU you have. So int is equivalent to i64 on a 64-bit computer, but it's equivalent to i32 on a 32-bit computer. But for the floating point numbers, it's always f64. And the third untyped type is untyped boolean. And this is any constant of value true or false. Untyped booleans can be implicitly cast to any boolean type. I mean, there is a default sort of bool type, but then there are some more like B32, for example. The type inference default is bool, and bool is equal to B8. So whenever you type something like this, you get a bool, which is a B8. You usually don't have to worry about this one at all. The only reason you will use these B32 and stuff is because you're making bindings for some library that's written in a language that has a different size of uh, bools and stuff like that. The fourth and final type is untyped string. This is any constant that looks like this, that it has like uh, some words in quotation marks or this backtick thing. This backtick you can use to make multi-line strings. And this thing will implicitly cast to string and C string. Odin has its own concept of a string and C string is how C does it. C string exists because in C strings have a little zero at the end to denote that they, they, they have ended. But in Odin the string notes its own length. So those work a bit differently. But a untyped string can be implicitly cast to both of these. And the type inference default for an untyped string is just the normal string. And this one simply exists so that it makes it easy for us to assign a string literal like this one here to either a string or a C string. So we don't have to do something special in order to assign it to a C string. Note here also that there is no 
allocation or anything happening when you do the implicit cast of an untyped string into a string or a C string. You might think there would need to be some kind of allocation because the C string needs to be one longer with a little zero at the end. But what it has done is just that whenever you make a string constant like this, for example, then it actually makes that string constant or string literal with a zero at the end. And then the C string can use that, but for the Odin string, that can be ignored. As a little bonus here at the end, I also wanted to mention that if you have, for example, a constant like this one, uh, which is a two with lots of zeros after it, and then you have a variable called small number that is a u8, that's an unsigned integer of eight bits. That one cannot store anything bigger than 255 inside it. If you have something like this and try to assign big constant to it, then this one here is an untyped integer. And when it tries to take that untyped integer and put it into this variable, then the compiler will protest because it sees that this thing here, which has maximum uh, can maximum have something of 255 inside it, cannot accommodate it. So, so it just it, it will refuse to do so. And this is nice because it avoids any weird problems you would get from these implicit conversions that happen from constants when you assign them to variables. Thank you so much for watching. I'm currently writing a book on the Odin programming language. It will come out later in 2024 as a digital book and it will contain lots of practical and useful information like this stuff. Special thanks to all my patrons who support me and help me make videos like this. And if you want to support me, then you can become a patron or you can use the thanks button under the video and you can also become a member here on YouTube if you so wish. Thank you all so much for watching, happy programming and bye bye.